Hi everyone, Malachi James here. In today's video, I want to talk about something we all struggle with, some of us more than others, but as a whole I think it's something we can all improve on, or at least notice when we're doing it. Of course I'm referring to procrastination. Now, I don't think we only procrastinate when we have a task that seems unappealing. I think we also have a tendency to do it even when we're passionate or excited about whatever it is that we need to get done. Now for me, procrastination is a never-ending battle. Even when I'm in one of my most productive states, most of the time it's something I only notice retrospectively, but I'm rarely mindful of it in the present moment. Some of the best freelance animation jobs I've ever had, where I've produced my best work, have still fallen short in some minor way. Whether it barely makes a deadline, or I get distracted during flow states. Now, from my experience, and from what I've heard from other people, I've come to the conclusion that there are two types of procrastination, and I want to discuss them both in detail. The first type, is complacent procrastination. This is an interesting one because it's sneaky. Because when we set our minds to do something that appears to be easy or not that time consuming, it's almost an excuse to leave it off till a later date. Because we say, oh, that's easy enough. I can do that quickly. No big deal. But we need to remember that any simple task that can be done less than an hour will most likely take more than an hour anyway. So it might as well be treated with the attention it deserves. And oftentimes, tasks that appear to be easy usually turn out to be more challenging than we thought. One way to avoid complacent procrastination is I bargain with myself, um, you know, by allowing myself a small reward upon completion of a task. For example, um, I say to myself, I'll complete this task in under an hour, then I'll go and have a slice of cake, or I'll go and have some lunch. Food is a good reward to use on yourself as a motivator to get that task done. It sounds kind of silly, but it is very effective. It's, it's worked for me many times. Phones can also be a cause for us to complacently procrastinate. When you're sat down to get something done, and you start by scrolling through social media because you think you have more than enough time to do a task, that's a bad move. One thing that helps me stop my phone from distracting me is I put it on the other side of the room and I plug it in on charge. When it's on charge, there's more of a commitment to leaving it on the other side of the room. And I'm less likely to be complacent about the task because I'm now facing it forthrightly. Now, the second type of procrastination is what I call overwhelmed procrastination. This is when you have so many complicated tasks or a big project that requires a lot of your time and energy and you just stall the planning because you're intimidated by how complicated and important it is. We overcome this by breaking the task down into small chunks and bullet pointing the specifics of the task and you do this in order. Then it seems much more manageable. Writing lists of all the specifics. If I have big tasks, I'll write two to three things tops to get done for the day. You have to be realistic about what can be accomplished in any given day. This method has usually worked out for me because I've always been a, a good organizer. I've always been good at organizing myself personally, but I know lots of people struggle with self-organizing. One aspect of overwhelmed procrastination that really gets me is sort of overanalyzing the intricacies of a task and being a perfectionist. And I kind of freeze, and I'm scared to take the next steps. I was talking to a friend on Discord the other day, and he referred to this feeling as paralysis by analysis. And that's exactly what it is. For instance, when I was thinking about taking this YouTube thing a little bit more seriously, and focusing on animation and cartoons and my thoughts and goals and so on, but as I started doing a lot more research, I realized how much investing in equipment and uh, commitment and time it takes. 
um, and I started to make excuses for myself not to do it because I thought I didn't have the right equipment but in truth all I need is a microphone a phone for a camera recording device etc I mean I have the computer and software I've been using already to make my artwork so I just needed to force myself to do it and the bottom line here is that it's impossible to know everything about something before we do it the key is to know enough so that we can actually start moving in the right direction one simple step at a time we all have so much more potential than we give ourselves credit for and I think the biggest problem is that people don't even realize when they actually are procrastinating I think if we can be mindful of procrastination while it's happening it's easier to notice what type of procrastination we're engaged in and we can easily put the methods I mentioned into effect to act on it, avoiding it. So there you have it, two types of procrastination. I hope you learned something in this video. I know I did by trying to articulate my thoughts and put this thing together. We should all try to be aware of when we're procrastinating so we can avoid it and maximize our creative potential. Please like and share this video if you feel that it was useful to you and share it with peers, friends, colleagues, what have you. And don't forget to subscribe. Links in the description below for my website. And if you want to see this finished piece, you can check it out on my Instagram. Stay focused everyone and keep creating. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.